Hey everyone, Katie Johnstone here with Mad River Outfitters and Ohio Fly Fishing Guides, and we are back for another fly tying tutorial. As always, we appreciate you being here. Be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on an episode, hit that like button, and head on over to madriveroutfitters.com so you can check out the hooks, tools, and materials we have right here on this channel. Today, we are going to be tying the gurgler. The gurgler was originally tied by Jack Gartside. It can be tied for either fresh water or salt water, and it can be tied in a variety of sizes. This is one of the reasons that I really enjoy tying this fly, is there's so much variation to it. And today we'll actually be tying um, a variation of the original recipe. Instead of using bucktail, we will, we will be using marabou. And so we're going to start off with getting our hook in the vise. And as I mentioned earlier, it can be tied for fresh water or salt water. Um, we have two different types of mustad hooks, one for fresh water, one for salt water. Today we'll be tying with a salt water hook, uh, just a little bit more durable, thicker, um, and I'll be using it for bass. And the thread we're going to be using is UTC 140. We'll be tying in fluorescent chartreuse. So we are going to start behind the hook eye, make wraps backwards to tie down our tag end. And then we're going to snip it off. We will continue to wrap towards the back of the hook, making side-by-side -side wraps, covering the shank. This just helps when you're laying down materials. And we want to end where the barb is. So that is uh, pretty equivalent to about where the hook starts to bend. And once we get to the barb, the next material we'll be using is marabou. Again, as I mentioned earlier, um, the original recipe calls for bucktail, but this is just a, a different and fun way to tie the fly. So for our tail, we want to measure the marabou to be about the length of our hook, to maybe a little bit longer. And I like to swap it over to my left hand, place it right on top of the hook, Make one loose wrap, just to make sure your marabou is still on top of the hook shank, and then make two tight wraps to lock it into place. And then we're going to advance our thread forward, um, just making a few wraps over this marabou. And it's okay that this, if this marabou wraps around, it's kind of a mess. This actually helps with the bulk of the fly. So make a couple wraps just to tie it off. Bring this back, trim the marabou off. Again, it's gonna look a little crazy, but that's okay. We want that for the bulk. And then we're just gonna wrap over the marabou and wrap back to where we were. So we want our thread to be hanging right above the barb of the hook. And the marabou doesn't need to be completely covered, but enough to know it's not going anywhere. And then next we're going to take our crystal flash and I will be tying with pearl. And you wanna take four to six strands. And the reason you want four to six is because we're going to use these as legs. So we need to have an even number. All right, once you got that, you just snip it off. And we're going to measure our crystal flash to be the length of the tail. And once you have that measurement made, rest it on top of the hook, make one loose wrap, make sure your materials are still in place, and then make two tight wraps to lock that material down. And you can sort of spread the flash reboot out so it goes throughout the tail. And then we're going to take our excess crystal flash and we're going to pull it backwards and just make a couple loose wraps over it. And the reason we're doing these loose wraps is we don't really need to be locking it into place. We're going to use it forward at the beginning of the or at the front of the fly. And so our next material we're going to take is our foam. Uh, this is about a half an inch and or a half an inch um, in the width and it is sheet foam two millimeters. And to easily tie this down, we're going to snip it and make an arrow. And then where our arrow begins, that's where we want to lay it down on our hook, where our thread is. So again, right above that barb. 
and you're going to pinch the foam and you want to make sure you apply a lot of pressure so that it completely wraps around and then we're going to make one loose wrap to make sure that the foam is on top of the hook and then we're going to make tight wraps advancing forward to lock the rest of that foam into place. I'm going to cover this marabou a little bit more and then we're going to wrap back to where we were right above the barb locking that foam into place and you want to make sure you have good tension on these wraps. You don't want to go too tight because you don't want to to rip the foam, um, but you want to make sure that it's it's not moving. Then next we're going to take our Estaz. We'll be using the medium um, in chartreuse. Rest that on top of the foam. Make one loose wrap, make sure it's in place, and then make tight wraps moving forward, locking that Estaz down. And then we're just going to wrap forward, and we want to stop um, a hook eye's length from the hook eye. And the reason for this is when we get to the end of this fly, we're going to need that room to really lock down our materials. And so at this point, if you have a rotary vise, you can do a half hitch and then use the rotary feature when we wrap this estaz forward. Um, but for now, I'm just going to hand wrap it. And when we're wrapping this forward, we want to make pretty close side-by-side -side wraps. And as you come around the top, you want to push the material back so that you're not um, wrapping it down. It's not getting caught in there. Because we want this to look buggy, we want it to look big. And so pushing the material out of the way allows, to have a, allows the material to make a bigger profile. And so we're going to wrap this toward, toward the front where our thread is dangling. And again, like I mentioned earlier, this fly is fun because you can do a lot of variations. So you know you could do chartreuse foam and uh, like orange estaz or silver. So there's a lot of variations and, and fun you can have with this. And once we get to our thread, we're going to go ahead and lock this off. So make a couple of tight wraps to lock the material off and then I also like to make a couple wraps in the front. I'll push the estaz, estaz back, make a few wraps and this just makes it easier for the upcoming steps so you don't have so much material in the way. And we'll go ahead and cut our excess off Put that to the side. And then if you need to, you can make a couple more wraps just to really get that material out of the way. Next, we're going to take our foam and we're going to bring it forward. Make sure it's even on the hook in the middle. And then like we did back here, we're going to pinch our foam where our thread is hanging. Make a loose wrap. Make sure your foam is still centered and then make two tight wraps to really lock that foam into place. Losing my thread. And so with this fly, it's important that the head sticks up. And in order to do that, we're going to build a thread dam here. Um, and before we get to that step, this is where I usually like to trim the head to get the fly to be um, the actual profile I want. So with this part, you can make the head, you can just snip it right across. You can sort of make a moon shape. Um, again, that's where you can come in with all those different variations. But for today's fly, I'm just going to cut it straight across. And then I'm going to pull it back and start working on that thread dam. And so here, I'm just building that thread up so that it props the foam up. And as you can see, you can already tell it's starting to do so. And if it's not fully propped up, just keep making more wraps until you get it to where you need it to be. And then lastly, we're going to take the rest of our crystal flash. And we're going to bring it up towards the front of the hook. Lay it down right in the middle of your foam. Take your thread, lock it down into that crease 
where we also tied the foam down. Take another wrap, tight wrap. And then the reason that we did the four to six strands is so that when we divide it, we have even legs and more material than just one on each side. Gives it a little more of a profile. And you can just kind of wiggle the legs to where you need them to be. Then make a couple wraps to lock them in. And then this is where I'll usually go ahead and cut my legs about an inch or so. And then to finish off the fly, you're just going to push that foam back and do a whip finish or a half hitch. Here I'm going to go ahead and do a whip finish. And you want to make sure you do push that foam back so that you have enough room and you're not clipping the foam. And then we'll snip our thread off. I like to finish this fly with a little bit of Z-Mint just so I know my thread is going to be in place. I'm not going anywhere. And I'll also put a little bit in the crease just to help with the legs. And with that, we have the gurgler. Again, I'm Katie Johnstones. If you have any questions about this fly, feel free to call the shop. Don't, for, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, smash that like button, leave a comment below, and we'll see you on the next video. If you like this video, hit subscribe. It helps out a lot. And check out these videos. We think you might like them too.